Chapter 1. Values, Types, and Operators Below the surface of the machine, the program moves. Without effort, it expands and contracts. In great harmony, electrons scatter and regroup. The forms on the monitor are but ripples on the water. The essence stays invisibly below. Master Yuan Ma, The Book of Programming In the computer's world, there's only data. You can read data, modify data, create new data, but that which isn't data cannot be mentioned. All this data is stored as long sequences of bits and thus fundamentally alike. Bits are any kind of two-valued things, usually described as zeros and ones. Inside the computer, they take, the form, they take forms such as high or low electrical charge, a strong or weak signal, or a shiny or dull spot on the surface of a CD. Any piece of discrete information can be reduced to a sequence of zeros and ones, and thus represented in bits. For example, we can express the number 13 in bits. This works the same way as a decimal number, but instead of 10 different digits, we only have two, and the weight of each of these increases by a factor of two from right to left. Here are the bits that make up the number 13, with the weights of the digits shown below them. That's the binary number 00001101. It's a non-zero digit, stands for 8, 4, and 1, and adds up to 13. Values. Imagine a sea of bits, an ocean of them. A typical modern computer has more than 100 billion bits in its volatile data storage working memory. Non-volatile storage, the hard disk or equivalent, tends to have yet a few orders of magnitude more. To be able to work with such quantities of bits without getting lost, we separate them into chunks that represent pieces of information. In a JavaScript environment, those chunks are called values. Though all values are made of bits, they play different roles. Every value has a type that determines its role. Some values are numbers, some values are pieces of text, some values are functions, and so on. To create a value, you must merely invoke its name. This is convenient. You don't have to gather building material for your values or pay for them. You just call for one and whoosh, you have it. Of course, values are not really created from thin air. Each one has to be stored somewhere, and if you want to use a gigantic number of them at the same time, you might run out of computer memory. Fortunately, this is only a problem if you need them all simultaneously. As soon as, soon as you no longer use a value, it will dissipate, leaving behind its bits to be recycled as building material for the next generation of values. The remainder of this chapter introduces the atomic elements of JavaScript programs, that is, the simple value types and the operators that can act on such values. Numbers. Values of the number type are, unsurprisingly, numeric values. In a JavaScript program, they are written as follows. Using that in a program which will cause the bit pattern for the number 13 to come into existence inside the computer's memory. JavaScript uses a fixed number of bits, 64 of them, to store a single number value. There's only so many patterns you can make with 64 bits, which limits the number of different numbers that can be represented with n decimal digits, you can represent 10 to the n numbers. Similarly, given 64 binary digits, you can represent 2 to the 64 different numbers, which is about 18 quintillion and 18 with 18 zeros after it. That's a lot. Computer memory used to be much smaller, and people tended to use groups of 8 or 16 bits to represent their numbers. It was easy to accidentally overflow with small numbers to end up with a number that did not fit in the given bit number of bits. Today, even computers that fit in your pocket have plenty of memory, so you're free to use 64-bit chunks, and you need not worry about overflow only when dealing with truly astronomical numbers. Not all whole numbers less than 18 quintillion fit into JavaScript number. Those bits also store negative numbers, so one bit indicates the sign of the number, a bigger issue is representing non-whole numbers. To do this, some of the bits are used to store the position of the decimal point. The actual number of whole numbers that can be stored is more in the range of 9 quadrillion, 15 zeros, which is still pleasantly huge. Fractional numbers are written using a dot. For very big or very small numbers, you may also use scientific notation by adding an e for exponent followed by the exponent of the number. That's 2.98 times 10 to the 8th or 299,800,000. Calculations with whole numbers, also called integers, that are smaller than the aforementioned 9 quadrillion are guaranteed to always be precise. Unfortunately, calculations with fractional numbers are generally not. Just as pi cannot be precisely expressed by a finite number of decimal digits, many numbers lose some precision when only 64 bits are available to store them. This is a shame, but it causes a practical problem only in specific situations. The important thing is to be aware of it, and treat fractional digital numbers as approximations, not as precise values. Arithmetic. The main thing to do with numbers is arithmetic. 
Arithmetic operations such as addition or multiplication take two number values and produce a new number from them. Here's what they look like in JavaScript. The plus and multiply symbols are called operators. The first stands for addition and the second stands for multiplication. Putting an operator between two values will apply it to those values and produce a new value. Does this mean add 4 and 100 and multiply the result by 11, or is the multiplication done before the adding? As you might have guessed, the multiplication happens first. As in mathematics, you can change this by wrapping the addition in parentheses. For subtraction, there's the minus operator. Division can be done with the slash operator. When operators appear together without parentheses, the order in which they are applied is determined by the precedence of the operators. The example shows that multiplication comes before addition. The slash operator has the same precedence as asterisks. Likewise, plus and minus have the same precedence. When multiple operators with the same precedence appear next to each other, as in 1 minus 2 plus 1, they are applied left to right. 1 minus 2 and then plus 1. Don't worry too much about these precedence rules. When in doubt, just add parentheses. There is one more arithmetic, arithmetic operator which you might not immediately recognize. The percent symbol is used to represent the remainder operation. X percent Y is the remainder of dividing X by Y. For example, 314 percent 100 produces 14 and 144 modulo 12 gives 0. The remainder, the remainder operator's precedence is the same as that of the multiplication and division. You'll also see this operator referred to as modulo. Special numbers. There are three special, number, special values in JavaScript that are considered numbers, but don't behave like normal numbers. The first two are infinity and negative infinity, which represent the positive and negative infinities. Infinity minus one is still infinity and so on. Don't put too much trust in infinity-based computation though. It isn't mathematically sound and it will quickly lead to the next number, NAN. NAN stands for not a number, even though it is a value of the number type. You'll get this as a result when, for example, you try and calculate zero divided by zero, infinity minus infinity, or any number of other numeric operations that don't yield a meaningful result. Strings. The next basic data type is the string. Strings are used to represent text. They're written by enclosing their content in quotes. You can see, you can use single quotes, double quotes, or backticks to mark strings as long as the quotes start at the start and the end of the string match. You can put almost anything between quotes to have JavaScript make a new string value of it, but a few characters are more difficult. You can imagine how putting quotes between quotes might be hard since they will look like the end of the string. New lines, the characters you get when you press enter, can be included only when the string is enclosed with backticks. To make it possible to include such characters in a string, the following notation is used. A backslash inside quoted text indicates that the character after it has special meaning. This is called escaping the character. A quote that is preceded by a backslash will not end the string, but be part of it. When an N occurs after a backslash, it is in interpreted as new line. Similarly, a T after a backslash means a tab character. Take the following string. This is the actual text in the string. There are, of course, situations where you want a backslash in a string to be just a backslash, not a special code. If two backslashes follow each other, they will collapse together, and only one will be left in the resulting string value. This is how the string, a new line character, is written like uh, backslash n can be expressed. Strings, too, have to be modeled in a series of bits to be able to exist inside the computer. The way JavaScript does this is based on the Unicode standard. This standard assigns a number to virtually every character you would ever need, including characters from Greek, Arabic, Arabic, Japanese, Armenian, and so on. If we have a number for every character, a string can be described by a sequence of numbers, and that's what JavaScript does. There's a complication, though. JavaScript's representation uses 16 bits per string element, which can describe up to 2 to the 16 different characters. However, Unicode characters defines more characters than that, about twice as many at this point. So some characters, such as emoji, take up two character positions in JavaScript, JavaScript strings. We'll come back to this in chapter five. Strings cannot be divided, multiplied, or subtracted. The plus operator can be used on them not to add, but to concatenate, to glue two strings together. The following line will produce the string concatenate. String values have a number of associated functions, methods, that can be used to perform other operations on them. I'll say more about these in chapter 4. Strings written with, with single or double quotes, 
behave very much the same. The only difference lies in which type of quote you need to escape inside of them. Backtick quoted strings, usually called template literals, can do a few more tricks. Apart from being able to span lines, they can also embed other values. When you write something inside of money symbol curly brackets in a temporate, template literal, it is, its result will be computed, converted to a string, and included in that position. This example produces the string half of 100 is 50. Unary operators. Not all operators are signal, symbols. Some are written as words. One example is a type of operator which produces a string value naming the type of value you give to it. We will use console log in example code to indicate whether we want to see the result of evaluating something. More about that in the next chapter. The other operators shown so far in this chapter all operated on two values, but type of takes only one. Operators that use two values are called binary operators, while those that only take one are called unary operators. The minus operator can be used both as a binary operator and as a unary operator. Boolean values. It is often useful to have a value that distinguishes between only two possibilities, like yes and no or on and off. For this purpose, JavaScript has a Boolean type, which has just two values, true and false, written as those words. Comparison. Here is one way to produce Boolean values. The greater than and less than signs are the traditional symbols for is greater than and is less than, respectively. They are binary operators. Applying them results in a Boolean value that indicates whether they hold true in this case. Strings can be compared in the same way. The way strings are ordered is roughly alphabetic, but is not really what you'd expect to see in a dictionary. Uppercase letters are always less than lowercase ones, so uppercase Z is less than lowercase A, and non-alphabetic characters, exclamation point, dash, and so on, are also included in the ordering. When comparing strings, JavaScript goes over the characters from left to right, comparing the Unicode codes one by one. Other similar operators are greater than equal to, less than equal to, equal to, and not equal to. There is only one value in JavaScript that is not equal to itself, and that is not a number. Not a number is supposed to denote the, num the result of a nonsensical computation, and as such, it isn't equal to the result of any other nonsensical computations. Logical operators. There are also some operators that can be applied to Boolean values themselves. JavaScript supports three logical operators, AND, OR, and NOT. These can be used to reason about Booleans. The ampersand ampersand operator represents the logical end. It is an op a binary operator and its result is true only if both the values given to it are true. The pipe pipe operator denotes logical or. It produces true if either of the values given to it is true. Not is written as an exclamation mark. It is a unary operator that flips the value given to it. Not true produces false and not false gives true. When mixing these Boolean operators with arithmetic and other operators, it is not always obvious when parentheses are needed. In practice, you can usually get by knowing that of the operators we have learned so far, pipe or or has the lowest precedence, then comes end, then the comparison operators less than, equal to, and so on, and then the rest. This order has been chosen such that in typical expressions like the one that follows, as few parentheses are as possible are necessary. The last logical operator we will look at is not unary, not binary, but ternary, operating on three values. It is written with a question mark and a colon like this. This one is called the conditional operator, or sometimes just the ternary operator, since it is the only such operator in the language. The operator uses a value to pick the left of the question mark to decide which of the two other values to pick. If you write a question mark b colon c, the result will be b when a is true and c otherwise. Empty values. There are two special values, written null and undefined, that are used to denote the absence of a meaningful value. They are themselves values, but they carry no information. Many operations in the language that don't produce a meaningful value yield undefined simply because they have to yield some value. The difference in meaning between undefined and null is an accident of JavaScript's de design, and it doesn't matter most of the time. In cases where you actually have to concern yourself with these values, I recommend treating them as mostly interchangeable. Automatic type conversion. In the introduction, I mentioned that JavaScript goes out of its way to accept almost any program you give it, even programs that do odd things. This is nicely demonstrated by the following expressions. 
When an operator is applied to the wrong type of value, JavaScript will quietly convert that value to the type it needs using a set of rules that often aren't what you want or expect. This is called type coercion. The null in the first expre expression becomes zero and the five in the second expression becomes five from string to number. Yet in third expression, plus tries string concatenation before numeric addition, so the one is converted to a one from number to string. When something that doesn't map to a number in an obvious way, such as five or undefined, is converted to a number, you get the value not a number. Further, arithmetic operations on not a number keep producing not a number, so if you find yourself getting one of those in an unexpected place, look for accidental type conversions. When comparing values of the same type using the equals operator, the outcome is, equal, is easy to predict. You should get true when both values are the same, except in the case of not a number. But when the types differ, JavaScript uses a complicated and confusing set of rules to determine what to do. In most cases, it just tries to convert one of the values to the other value's type. However, when null or undefined occurs on either side of the operator, it produces true only if both sides are one of null or undefined. That behavior is often useful. When you want to test whether a value has a real value instead of null or undefined, you can compare it to null with the equals or not equals operator. What if you want to test whether something refers to the precise value false? Expressions like zero equals false and empty string equals false are also true because of automatic type conversion. When you do not want any of these type conversions to happen, there are two additional operators, triple equals and uh, not double equals. The first tests whether a value is precisely equal to the other, and the second tests whether it is precisely not equal. Thus, empty string triple equals false is false as expected. I recommend using the three character comparison operators defensively to prevent unexpected type conversions from tripping you up. But when you're certain the types on both sides will be the same, there's no problem with using the shorter operators. Short circuiting of logical operators. The logical operators AND and OR handle values of different types in a peculiar way. They will convert the value on their left side to Boolean type in order to decide what to do, but depending on the operator and the result of that conversion, they will return either the original left-hand value or the right-hand value. The OR operator, for example, will return the value to its left when that value can be converted to true and will return the value on its right otherwise. This has the expected effect that the values are Boolean and does something analogous for values of other types. We can use this functionality as a way to fall back on the default value. If you have a value that might be empty, you can put OR after it with a replacement value. If the initial value can be considered to be false, you'll get the replacement instead. The rules for converting strings and numbers to Boolean values state that zero, not a number, and the empty string count as false, while all other values count as true. That means zero or negative one produces negative one, and empty string or not question mark yields not question mark. The question mark question mark operator resembles double pipe, but returns the value on the right only if the one on the left is null or undefined, not if it is some other value that can be converted to false. Often this is preferable to the behavior of or. The end operator works similarly, but the other way around. When the values to the left is something that converts to false, it returns that value and otherwise it returns the value on its right. Another important property of these two operators is that the part to the right is evaluated only when necessary. In the case of true or x, no matter what x is, even if it's a piece of a program that does something terrible, the result will be true, and x is never evaluated. The same goes for false and x, which is false and will ignore x. This is called short circuit evaluation. The conditional operator works in a similar way. Of the second and third values, only the one that is selected is evaluated. Summary. We looked at four types of JavaScript values in this chapter, numbers, strings, booleans, and undefined values. Such values are created by typing in their name, true, null, or value 13 ABC. You can combine and transform values with operators. We saw binary operators for arithmetic, plus, minus, multiply, divide, and modulo. String concatenation, plus, comparison, equal, not equals, triple equals, double not equals, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and logic, and or as well as several unary operators, negative to negate a number, exclamation mark to, neg to negate logically, and type of to find a value's type. Any ternator, ternary operator, question mark, colon, to pick one of two values based on a third value. 
This gives you enough information to use JavaScript as a pocket calculator, but not much more. The next chapter will start tying these expressions together into basic programs.